Hi, welcome to the Calculus One lecture series. And uh, we are in the unit number three. We just started a new unit. And uh, this unit will talk about the applications of differentiation. And uh, this is the second video for the lecture number 18. And uh, we are talking about uh, the functions, the maximum value and the minimum values for a function. All right, so let's go ahead and go to take a look uh, our uh, handout, okay? So like uh, for the uh, video number one, we covered basically two things, right? So we covered the definitions about the, what is absolute max and what is absolute mean. And then we also cover the definition about what is the local max and the local means here. And now the second part, we're going to take a look at the summer, you know, a very important definition we're going to talk about is the, what is the critical values. And then the, how do we use the critical values and how do we learn from the video number one to help us to find what is the, where is the local max, where is the local mean, and where is the absolute max, and where is the absolute mean. Okay, so let's take a look at the critical values, very, very important definitions here. So we say a critical value, okay, a critical number, we say C is a number, Okay, so let's see here is a number. Okay, in the domain. Okay, that's very important. In the domain of uh, your f of a function, and for which. Okay, either f prime c equal to zero or f prime c does not exist. Okay, so this is a very uh, short definition, but we have three very important keywords to see here. So we know how do we define the critical value? The first thing here is of course, this number has to be in the domain of your function, okay? Then the second important thing is here, what is a critical value? We said, hey, if this is a critical value, your derivative will be equal to zero. Most of the students, they do remember this term. Now also the critical values has said uh, F prime C does not exist. And this is the frequently make the mistake on some of the, you know, a lot of students, they, they know the f prime c equal to zero, but they also forgot to check, you know, it's f prime c does not exist. And of course, you know, the c, whatever the c has to be in the domains, right? Okay, so now let's take a look at the Fermat series here. The Fermat series is tell you, this also is a very important series here, right? The Fermat series tell you, okay, they said, uh, if f has a local max or mean, so if f has local max and mean, add the value of the c and f prime c exists, okay? Then we will say f prime c equal to zero. Okay, so here also for the Fermat theory, there is also a keywords to remember. So we say if f has a local max and local mean, here this is very important. Here we said also the f prime c has to exist. Then we know the f prime c has to equal to zero. And uh, also the backward does not uh, apply. So what means backward? So we say if f prime c 
you know, is equal to zero, okay, can we guarantee there is a local max and a local means or the F prime C? So can we guarantee so the local max and the local mean or local mean has to exist? Okay, so this backward will not apply here. We're going to see some example of why it's not applied. So be very careful here. We say if they have local max, local mean, and the F prime C exist, then it has to be, then the F prime C has to be equal to zero. But if F prime C equal to zero, doesn't guarantee you have local max and the local means here. All right. Okay, so now let's see here. Let's take a look at this is a very important concept see here. So the, they said the truth or false. If F prime C equal to zero, then the, F, then the C is local max and local mean. So this is just like we just talked about is the, this backward things here. We said if prime, F prime C equal to zero, then guarantee this is local max or local mean. This is true or false? This is a false, okay? Very important concept. Why this is a false? I can give you an example, all right? So like a very simple example, like f of x equal to the x cubed functions here, okay? And uh, now in here you said, okay, so like and then that f prime c, Okay, f prime x is here is equal to the three x squares, right? Then if I set a c equal to zero, so f prime c, so f prime zero is equal to zero. So is this zero is a local max and the local mean? Oh no, here, because if you graph your function, the f of x equal to the x cube, you will have something like this. Right, so your f prime c is here. Right, so your f prime c will give you what? Will give you like the f prime c will give you the zero, f, give you f prime zero. But as you see, this is a lot of local max and the local mean. Correct? Okay. All right, so this is a very important concept, right? So now the second one is here. So I said, uh, Truth or false, all right? So if C is a local max and local mean, then F prime C has to be zero. Is it true or false? Okay, so this one sounds like, you say, oh, that's just a ferment series here. You say, hey, ferment series tell you, if there's a local max and a local mean at C, then F prime C equal to zero. Ha, huh. why? And this is a false here. But you say, hey, this sounds like a Fermat series. Ha, huh. like what I say, the Fermat series, in order to see here, the F prime C has to exist. Okay, so then here, the problem here is false, is why? Is because it does not have, have the hypothesis. It does not have the hypothesis F prime C exist. Okay, so you say, okay, what's that means here? So like, let's take a look like, uh, for example, I can give you a, like the, the example now working. So this is X minus two, right? So plus one, okay? So for the, this one here, this is X minus two plus one here. So you can see here, okay, so this is the absolute value functions, right? So this is one, two, okay? So as you can see, one, two, three. Okay, so this function here is what? It's something like this, right? Right, so it's something like this. 
So like in here, let's take a look at this point here. This is a what? This is a C equal to two. So what is the C equal to two here? C equal to two. Oh, this is a what? C equal to two is this point, right? So this is a what? This is a local minima. But what happens here? But f prime c, this point is not differentiable. Remember in the previous units, we said this is not differentiable, right? So this is not exist. Why is not exist? Huh? Because in the last units, we said this is a what? This is a sharp point. You get that? So this is a false here. So be very careful about that. So the, this one is, sounds like very, very similar, like the Fermat series, right? Like we say Fermat series here, the Fermat, don't forget the F prime C has to exist. Then I know this is local mean and local max. Okay, so now let's take a look. How do we find, uh, you know, the, how do we find the critical values here? Okay, so the f of x, so this is x to the fifth roots, so x equal one fifth, all right? And uh, so the domains here is all real number, right? So then you say f prime x, so right now we should be very good at f prime x, so it's use the power rule, so you move this is one fifth, then here this is one fifth minus one, so this is one fifth, x equal to negative four fifths. So this is one fifths. So this is x to the fourth and the fifth power. Okay, so back to the definition. What is the critical point? Critical point is f prime equal to zero. So the f prime x equal to zero. So do I have a such point? because this is one in the numerator, right? So if a fraction equals to zero, numerator has to equal to zero, but right now numerator is one. So we say no such point, okay? But remember, right? And we also say the f prime x does not exist. We have a two way to get the critical points, right? So it does not exist. So which number does not exist? Ha, huh, I know this is on the denominator. So when the x equal to zero, then the f prime x is not exist. So I know the x equal to zero, what is this one? This is the only critical point. So for this function, so this is the only critical point, right? Of course, in here, because this one is not exist a denominator, but x equal to zero, you know, this is, it has to be what? Has to be inside uh, the domain of your f of x, right? So be very, very careful. So in here, we only have one critical point here, okay? Okay, now let's take a look here. And uh, let's take a look at this one here. Okay, so how do I find a critical number for the f of x, x plus x, one over x here? Okay, so for this number here, I know it's uh, going to be what? It's going to, so what is the domain for here? So the domain is everything except what? Except x equal to zero, right? So x equal to zero cannot be, right? So it's not in the domain. Okay, so now let's take a look at f prime x here. f prime x, so if you want, this is x plus x to the negative one power. So the, when you take the derivative, it's a lot easier. So f prime x, the x will be what? Will be one. Then the, here will be the negative one, the x to the negative of what? Negative one minus negative one. So this is one minus x to the negative two. So this is one minus x square of the one. All right, now I can combine it. This is x square. This is x square minus one. All right. 
Okay, so now we say, okay, what is the critical point? The first one is here, the critical point is f prime x equal to zero. And I know this is a fraction. And if this is a fraction, that means the numerator has to be equal to zero. So I saw I say x squared minus one equal to zero. So you will have x minus one, x plus one equal to zero. So you will have x equal to one and what? x equal to the negative one. So you will have a what? You will have a two critical points here, right? Okay. So this will be your critical point. And then you say, okay, the second condition is f prime x does not exist. Okay, so you say oh, for f prime x does not exist, that means this numerator cannot be zero, so it does not exist. So where it does not exist, that means when the x equal to what? x equal to zero. And so in here, okay, can you say, is this is a critical point? So can you say this is a critical point? Well, this satisfies the condition number two, right? Remember a critical point has to have both conditions. Is f prime x equal to zero or f prime x does not exist? Is this is a critical point? The answer is what? The answer is no. Why? Why? It's because x equal to zero is not in the domains here. All right, so x equal to zero is not defined in the domains here. Okay, so now we know how to find the critical values here. Okay, so now the next ones here we're going to talk about is what we call the incident close interval method of absolute max and absolute mean. So we say, how do I find the absolute max and the absolute mean if they have the close intervals here, right? So, the, okay, so this is how do we find it? So the first thing here is uh, you can find it without graphing it. So what you do here, you find the f of x, okay, for, all the critical point. Okay, all the critical points x in this open interval a b, right? I'm looking for the close interval is bracket, but I want to find all the critical point in the open interval. Then the second Part is you find the end point, right? So because the end point here is A and B, right? Okay, so what you do here is uh, like then you find uh, F of A and uh, you find F of the B, okay? And uh, then, so you find all the critical points, X in the A, B, and then you find, uh, find the values, right? Find the values for function value, F of X value, function value for all the critical points. Okay, now what you do, so number three is here, and then you compare these two so I will choose the largest and the smallest value from the steps one and two, okay? So basically it's tell you, you know, if you have, uh, you know, a close interval, how do you find a, the absolute max and the absolute mean. So basically you compare the function value at the end point A and the B, then you find all the critical points inside this uh, interval. Then you find the value of those critical points 
And so then you choose which one is the largest, which one is the smallest. All right, so let's take a look at this example. How do I find extreme values? All right, at the, this close interval two, 10. Okay, so now let's take a look see here, okay? So let's take a look. So I said f prime x. Okay, so maybe I will rewrite the f of x first. So make the derivative a little bit easier. So f of x is here. This is a 10x minus x squared. The square root really is what is one half, right? So then I said f prime x. So right now we should be very familiar with the chain rule. So this is the one half. This is a 10x minus x squared. One half minus one. Okay. Then the chain rule, you take the derivative inside, this will be 10 minus 2x. Okay. Simplify it a little bit. So this is one half minus one will be negative one half. So this is uh, going to the bottom. So it's a 10x minus x squared. And you have a two here, you can cancel the two here. So what is, it will be five minus x, right? So it will be five minus x. And now in here, let's take a look. What is the critical numbers here? Okay, so the critical number, critical value, Right, so the critical value is the first derivative equal to zero. So f prime x equal to zero. So what is f prime x equal to zero? That means x equal to what? X equal to five, right? That means uh, I need to have, uh, you know, the, I need to have the x equal to five as a denominator, you know, the numerator equal to zeros, correct? Okay, so the, so that's one of the critical values here. Now the second one here is f prime x does not exist. Okay, does not exist. That means 10x minus x squared equal to zero is not going to exist, right? So that means you can take the 10x out, this is uh, and you can take the x out. Okay, so you can take the x out. Uh, then this is a 10 minus x. You set it equal to zero. Then you will get x equal to zero and uh, x equal to what? x equal to 10 here, okay? And uh, so uh, this, uh, the critical values here are, uh, yeah, so in here you say, hey, is x equal to 10 is a critical value? And uh, this one is yes, right? Because uh, x equal to 10 is inside the domain. How about uh, this one here, x equal to zero? Is this is the critical value? And this is not a critical. Why? because it's not in the domains, right? So not a critical, since uh, what? X equal to zero is not in the 210. This is my domains here. So I have uh, two critical values here, right? So one is a 10 and the other is a five, okay? So now what we need to do is here, we just need to put a little tables here. So we put the little tables here. This is x, this is f of x. So we put the two end point and the critical number two, five, and the 10. Then you plug the two, five, and the 10 back here to see what is the value. So you will have a four, zero, and a what? And the five, okay? So where is your local max? Where is your, where is your absolute max? Where is your absolute mean? So here, this is what? When the x equal to 10, f of x equal to five, what is this one? This one is what is absolute max. 
And uh, what is this one here? This one, okay, so this one's here, five and the zero. And then what is this one? This one going to be what? This one is going to be absolute what? Absolute mean. And because of this one, the derivative exists and uh, you know, it's like the, it's a, like the F prime equal to zero. So this one you can also call, this is the local mean also going to happen in here. Okay. Right, it's pretty cool, right? Okay, now let's take a look at number 15 here. All right, so the number 15, this one we need to be a little careful here because it says in here that this I have an open interval, which is the four to 10. Okay, so let's say, do the extreme value exist? Okay, let's say here, let's take a look at F prime X. So the F prime X will be the 12 X minus what? Minus two X here, right? Okay, so the 12 X minus two X. So what is the next thing that I need to do here? I need to set to find the critical value. Okay, so critical value I have F prime X equal to zero. That means 12 minus, I'm sorry, this is a derivative is 12, it's not a 12 X. Okay, so this is a 12 minus 2x. So it's a 12 minus 2x equal to zero. What is x? x equal to six. Okay, so the next one here is f prime x does not exist. Do we have any points that does not exist? No. So I only have a what? I only have a one critical value. <coughs> Excuse me. So this is our critical values here, right? So this is our only one critical values here. And so this is the critical value. Okay, so now in here, be very careful. This is a four is the open intervals here, all right? So let's take a look here. I put the X values here. So I will, so first this is a critical value six. This is F of X and I put the end point here. This is a 10. So six, if you plug in, I will get a 42. And the 10, I, you know, I will plug in, I will get a 26. And then even right now in here, four, Four is an open interval. I, I may put it in here. Now I will show you from graph why I need that. So if you put a four in here, that means when you're getting closer and closer and closer to four, this is going to be 38 here. Okay, so in here, so I know now the which one give you the largest value here? This one, right? And then the which one will give you the smallest value here? Is this one here. So this one is just a reference here. So if this one's here, right, is larger than 42, then I don't know, I cannot, this is not our absolute max anymore. Even I don't know what it is, right, but it's getting closer and closer to this numbers here. So basically what I mean here, this is the graph here, right? So it's, uh, so this is a 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, all right? So, and uh, this is, uh, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, see here. Okay, so if you take a look at this graph, see here, when x equal to four, I have a 38, so it's something like in here. And uh, x equal to six, I have a 42 see here. x equal to 10, I have a 26, all right? So this is my graph, okay? So by 
That's why by plugging this number, you can see what is this function. Even I don't have a value here, but then I can compare. So I know the six of 42, it is our what? Absolute. So this one here, this is absolute what? Absolute max, right? And this one's here, this is our absolute what? Absolute mean. Cool? Okay, now let's take a look at number 16 here. Okay, so the same things here when we try to find the trim value of f of x. And now this is at zero to two, two pi here. All right, we always find a critical value. So the, take a look at the derivative. F prime x is here, so it's two x is a two. Sine x is a what? It's a cosine x, right? Okay, so the, now we said, okay, I said the first critical value is f prime x equal to zero. That means two plus cosine x equal to what? To zero here, right? That means cosine x equal to negative two. Is it possible? No. So we say no such value. Right, because the cosine is between negative one and one. Now the second one here we say is f prime x does not exist. Okay, f prime x does not exist. Do we have any value? Make the f prime x not exist? We say no such value. Oh, so for this problem, okay, both condition one, condition two, I cannot find any number. So what is our conclusion here? So it's no critical value. All right, so if no critical value, then I know my absolute max and the absolute mean has to happen on where? Huh? On the end point. Okay, so let's say I put it at zero, is in the two pi. So when the x equal to zero, this is zero. When this is two pi, so this is what? Four pi here, right? So now I know this will be what? This will be our absolute mean, and this is what? Absolute max here. Okay, so be very careful. You don't have to have the critical value. So like for this problem here, we don't have the critical values. So the absolute max minima still exists, right? Because it's a closed interval here, all right? So if it is a open interval, then we're not sure, then you might need to draw a picture and to decide where is that, okay? All right, so that's it for this, uh, you know, lecture number 18 is a very, very important topic, right? So we talk about the critical values. So remember, in order to find the critical values, you need to check two things, so, right? So the first is f prime x equal to zero, and then solve for what value of x to give you that. Then the next thing here is f prime x does not exist. Even you find the value, you need to check back to see the value you find not exist in the f prime x, does that value is inside the domain of f of x. If it's not, then that is not a critical value, all right? All right, so that is a very, very important concept, okay? We're going to use this critical value concept in, you know, in the several, lectures to follow this, right? So the very important here, the two things, f prime c equal to zero, f prime c does not exist. All right, that's it. Okay, so looking forward to talk to you on our next topic, see here. Okay, bye, have a good day.